recording. We are recording, by the way. What? You know, I'm going to click on something because there it is. And you're, this thing is just a jerk. There right. we go. Ch-ch-ch-ch-change, turn and face the strange. God, I, my singing is horrible, dude. You probably know this. Oh, what are you drinking? Death water. Death water. You're drinking uh, Kill, Kill Cliff? I don't know. <clears throat> it was in the fridge. I stole it. Gene, I want to apologize for the way we started the show last week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I just, I know a lot of people aren't going to see that for a while, except that I'm going to post it everywhere. And <laughs> I, I just, you're a good person, man. You're a good Thank human. You. Thank you. I apologize for my harsh, cruel behavior. <laughs> cruel? <laughs> you said it was, let me get this right. The most, no, I can't, I wasn't listening, but I think you said the most hurtful, <laughs> passive aggressive insult ever. You didn't say hurtful. You definitely said passive aggressive, but I wanted, I wanted more you from wanted what more. I had accomplished. Oh. <laughs> you want a recognition. Yeah. I want like a trophy, yeah. <laughs> you know, and just most passive aggressive insult, yeah. but most detrimental it's like a golden globe and so yeah right it's a golden globe i didn't want that shit the oscar oh yeah. yeah i think i got a booger hanging <laughs> ah, that's better all right man um so we're doing these a little bit out of order so do you want this one this one goes friday and the other one goes yeah the other one we just hold on to next week or the week after kind of evergreen or whatever yeah um yeah so this one yeah, this one goes Friday. We'll, we'll keep we keep in cycle with the newsletters. I think that works great. So we're time traveling a little bit here. Yeah, it's kind of exciting. Kind of like Loki. Gator Loki. Wasn't that cool? Gator Loki is my favorite. Of they the even Lokis. had they even had a little frog Loki. A frog Loki? You didn't see that? I missed Sorry. the frog. No, 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 Frog Thor. My bad. Frog Thor. No, you didn't I'm... see that? No. Where was that? Was that in the? Yeah, when he's climbing down the stairs to go to the little secret hideout down the ladder, there's like a little frog Thor. And I just saw I just saw a thing where they even brought Chris Hemsworth Hemsworth back to do the grunts and yelling for the frog. Well, he is so, still under contract. So they were like, "Get back here!" Oh man, that's pretty classic, yeah. Gene. I want you to know that I prepared today. Oh goodness. So you think it'll be a good show? No, I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I prepared. I uh, I tinkled. <laughs> okay. And I didn't drink a fizzy beverage. Hmm. Well, prepared. I'm drinking a fizzy beverage. So if I uh, if I just like disappear, you'll know what I'm doing. Oh, you're gonna be like burping. Uh, tinkling. Our dog. Our dog burps. Sherlock burps really loud. Dog burp. I don't think I've ever heard a dog burp. Oh man, he's you know I I don't know if it's a golden retriever thing or what, but they eat and drink so fast. Oh right. I got then you. they like go. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. And you're like, you okay, bud? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's good one. Just making room. <laughs> Just making room. All right. Well, let's uh, kick her off. Is it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what we do. We just say. Let's kick her off. Let's kick it off. Kick it off. Kick it. I like the music now. I'm no, sorry. I, I know. I, I told I, you. I, told I gave you. you so much shit about it. I told you. You just let it, let it grow on you, man. I like it now. Yeah. It's a little, like it. a little chill. Yeah. Kind of, you know, it takes the edge off, which is the, I think is what people are looking for in a podcast is like, you know, don't be too out there. <laughs> don't, you know, make grandiose statements or I mean, try to help with a problem. 
<laughs> don't, do <anything. laughs> don't do any of that stuff. Gene, what's going on, dude? How are you? I'm good, man. It's a uh, bright and early Tuesday. Woo! Mm, but you're probably watching this on Friday, so. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I won't watch it. I, I, <laughs> I don't I either. Just watch anything we do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I I'm the same way. Yeah, my therapist and the judge both said. <laughs> and the judge. <laughs> the judge is my therapist, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, if if I'm gonna get in trouble for jumping over the barricade, which looks like a hurdle. I'm just going to say, I think it's important that the judge helps me understand why. Is it judge Wapner? Or judge oh, Judy? no, Judge Judy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Judge Wapner. Good Lord, dude. Yeah. Going back there. Going I back used to there. watch that. Yeah, it was good stuff, man. You know, why, you know why they uh, they went under, don't you? Mm -mm. Yeah, the uh, retention and recruiting issues. They just couldn't keep anybody on the show. I know. Um I don't know that I would want to work for somebody like that. Would you want to work for yourself, Gene? Look at these transitions, baby. No, they are just so good. I would not. Gene, let's let's set this up for the viewer or listener, or perhaps the transcript reader. Hello, transcript reader. <laughs> so, so this is the ongoing conversation around how are shops going to make it through all of this work coming in, large quantities of their team leaving and difficulty in hiring new people. And last week, my hot take was lean into turnover. Right. Right. Lean into it. Celebrate turnover. And I think that's absolutely right. You have to realize things have changed. And I think that's where we start this week. A lot of people running shops have not accepted that the old stuff's not going to work anymore. They're still leaning into it. And I, I think... For me, it's like when you're trying to to get a lighter to light that's out of fluid, but you don't know it. <laughs> I just, you know, I'm, I'm sure just one time. And you know what? Damned if on that third time it doesn't just for a minute, but still not enough to get the fire going, Gene. Although maybe that's all you need. <laughs> See? Just that one time. See? Nice yeah. analogy. <laughs> yeah. So that note card is gone. So much for preparing. Yeah, that was it. I did one note card. <laughs> but have you noticed that? Like, you're still running a shop. So, now, I think this is the other thing. you got a smaller group. <laughs> yeah. And I think with a smaller group, you can make it through this easier sure. than if you're like, like, I've talked to some shops that are 100, 200 people. They're the ones that are seeing, like, 20 people leave. Yeah, I can't even imagine. I can't fathom the the turnover and the processes for bringing somebody in at that point, I mean, even beyond like 50 people. Um, yeah. yeah. I think when you're smaller, you could definitely sort of shuck and jive a little bit easier. Um, and you're, you know, when you're smaller, you are also doing the work, right? You're one yeah. of the owner operator, mm -hmm. sort of a setup. You're one of the team members. When you're a hundred people and you're in a manager position, all you're doing is managing. All you're doing is bringing in talent, right? Completely yeah. different. I, I don't even know that I'm qualified to speak on, um, you know, bringing somebody into a team like that, other than if I'm on the team myself. Well, we're finally in agreement on something. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> no, no you, this is a big part of it. It's like a lot of people look, and like even in the newsletter, even here on the podcast, they hear something and go, oh, I'm going to try that. You right. have to realize it's in the context of who you are. If you are like a 10 person shop and those people have been with you for a long time, yeah, you might lose one. You right. might lose two. Right. But you have to ask yourself, it's not always about hiring, right? Hiring is important. But sometimes if the main reason people are leaving is because they feel like either they're not being treated fairly because the market's changed, right? Well, other people are making like 30% more. That's what you hear a lot right now. Right. But if, if you shore that up, right? Raise your rates. Rates haven't been raised in two years. We talked about that, right? Raise your rates, distribute that money, shore up the current team. And then if you're smaller, see if you can't finesse your process a little bit. Mm. Where can you streamline? Where, where mm. can you take out waste so that you don't have to add new people, right? You don't right. need to get on this train of, I can't hire anyone if you're in a situation where you may not have to. And I think a lot of people get caught up in, 
and just the frenzy and the drama, it's hypnotic. Yeah. But at the same time, maybe you can slow things down a little with clients coming in. That's, maybe you can, uh, that's you a know, good point. get more every, things going. Every time I've heard of somebody bringing on new team members, it is the two scenarios. One is to replace someone, but then, yeah, like you're saying, it's it's because you've gotten more work and you need to spool up something, someone else or another team or whatever to handle new workload. Um, yeah, do you have to take that work right now? Can it be put off? Um, yeah. We, we do that, like, because there's, you know, me and some contractors and like, if we can't handle it right now, it has to wait. Like, it just, you know, we I don't have the luxury of, hey, let's just bring some people in. Um, it just has to wait. So, and I've never had a problem with somebody not being able to wait. I mean, they usually, they're like, okay, whatever, you know. Yeah, so I don't again, know. That's going to depend again, right? Because like, yeah. you, you are going to have some clients, like when we were doing the fantasy sports stuff, like there's a draft that has to happen two right. months before the league starts. And if right. you miss that, that yeah, you are going to lose money. You, if you're going up against CBS and Yahoo and all these things and you're right. not ready when they are, people are right. just going to pass you by and go on. So yeah, but, yeah. but for the most part, I think most of us are in that situation. But I think the other thing is to realize when we look at this with retention and recruiting, like we just talked about with smaller shops, some shops are pretty close. Like they mm. already had great culture. They already had people that wanted to work for them. Maybe they just need to tweak their salaries. Maybe they just need to tweak their process. Maybe they just need to slow down a little the way that things are coming in and adjust the flow. Um, and again, raise your rates, right? But like do those things. Maybe they're close. And others, I think, need to just hit it with a sledgehammer, the reset mm -hmm. button. You have just other shops are just not there and they're going to have to figure it out. And I think there are a lot of things you can do while you're going through that process. But for the ones that are way off, I, I think one of the biggest things you can do is look at how you look to somebody who might come in, right? And th this was one of the things in the newsletters, would you want to work for you? Mm -hmm. Like when you see the positioning of your company, because most people position their companies for clients. That's because you didn't have to worry as much about building the team. Right. But now that you have to sit there and go, okay, we need, we need more people. We're going to lose people. We have to, you don't want a revolving door. Like you, mm -hmm. you want to do that culture check and make sure everything's cool. But I think positioning is just as important for your team. And, and mm. I've been in this conversation before where, you know, brand is how the outside world looks at you. And culture is how your internal team sees you. Mm. Your brand and culture have to be aligned because otherwise somebody is lying, right? Yeah, so yeah we talked about that. Yeah, we talked about the, the dusty ping pong table. Yeah, exactly. So, so your brand, if you're saying that you're doing great stuff, yeah, then right. your culture better believe you're doing great stuff too because it's just flips of the coin, man. Right, right. So I think that's a huge way to make sure that you're keeping the people that you have and getting new people in because if those things are out of sync, everybody's going to feel it and they're going to go somewhere where it's lined up. How about this? Uh, you've got this written in here about the junior talent bringing up mm -hmm. junior talent. What, what have you seen happening? Yeah. I mean, I, I've seen, like, I know for, I know Sparkbox does this, they are specific about it and how they bring people up. They have a whole program and uh, apprenticeship is what they call it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and apprenticeships are great. Now, apprenticeships take a while. So mm -hmm. I think that's part of why, like, there's a lot of junior talent available, uh, specifically around digital project management. I know mm -hmm. I've heard, uh, I was speaking with somebody yesterday who's a UX designer who just came through Google's uh, authentication program mm -hmm. or certification program and went through all of that. So there's a lot of talent out there that is fresh, but a lot of people, I think, feel like no, that's not going to work. I think they're, they're trying to fix right now and they're not thinking about near, right? You've got now, near, and far. And I think we can't just be focused on now. We have to be thinking about what's coming up. Mm. And I think that's why reinforcing experienced hires that you may be able to hold on to for three or four years with juniors who may take three to four years as well, right? But within that six months to a year, they can take some of that pressure off I think that that's really critical. You, you mentioned mm -hmm. Sparkbox and their apprenticeship program. There are a lot of people who are going that route now. I think also, I mean, you were part of Iron Yard. You know that that can be kind of a tricky situation, mm -hmm. um, but there are some more schools out there now mm -hmm. that are kind of putting people out. I think 
eventually you're going to have to look at some way to kind of grow your own talent. I'm yeah. really shocked there's not a Google university and an Amazon university and an Apple university where they're growing this talent instead of just grabbing it from others. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is, that is amazing that they're not doing that. I guess they have the deep pockets to just snag whoever they want. Do you, do you put a little bit of the blame on, um, not blame is probably a weird word, but sure, they're big companies. Fuck them. Do you, do you kind of blame them for a lot of this sort of uh, no. raising employee rates and, and siphoning up talent? I mean, they're definitely the reason. They're definitely creating impact, but they don't even know we exist, right? right. That's like, that's like a, a freaking bug blaming us for stepping on it or almost stepping on it, right? You know, it's right, like, right. Yeah. I think we have to blame ourselves if we're going to do blame. Let, giant, why is the blame game here, Gene? Sorry. What if instead I'm going to reframe this <laughs> to what I do? Reframe um, it. But instead of thinking of it that way, what if we just acknowledge that, yeah, we followed in their footsteps. We thought we could do what they do, and we just can't. It's not who we are. And the people that work with us, and we talked about this recently, may end up wanting to go on and work for them, right? Right. That was from last week. But the thing is, we have to acknowledge that we are never going to be able to pay what they pay. <clears throat> we're never going to have those same benefits, but we're also never going to have people glued to their desk. You know, part of the reason why at a Google, yeah, right. they do your dry cleaning and they have those master chefs right. and they, they take care of your dog and yeah, all these always. things is because you're not going anywhere. Yeah, they don't want you to leave. No, we, yeah. we talk about asses and seats. They like glue them to the seat. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, re I remember there, but I'm going with it. I forget who I was talking to. Uh, this happens Dan to you a lot. Daniel Berker or something, somebody like that. They went to work at Google and he was like, man, this is so awesome. Like they send a bus to my house and like there's coffee on the bus and there's Wi-Fi on the bus. And they have like, <laughs> they have like a desk on the bus where I can work on my way to work. And I was like, that sounds pretty fucking horrible. It actually sounds like you're already working, right? Like, I mean, that's good. I, I could see somebody like, let's maximize the time between their house and the office and give them a way to work on that 45 minute drive. Like, holy crap, man. Like, yeah. Can I just listen to a damn podcast or something? Can I read the newspaper, do something else besides work at the moment I get out of bed? Well, no. especially when you realize that a lot of these companies that do that are the same ways that they put out the propaganda. Oh yeah. Right? It it's says, Time off is super important. You yeah. have to recharge. But then if I'm in if I'm in San Francisco and I call a friend who's at Apple and I say, hey, do you want to grab a drink tonight? I can't. Oh, I'd love to, but I can't get out. I'm going to be here till yep. midnight. I, I hear know. that shit all the time from people who are in those types of companies. You yeah. know what? Also, it could be they just don't want to see me. <laughs> no. I'm just now starting to realize <laughs> that my daughter said she had to work until midnight. She doesn't even have a job. <laughs> I All remember, right, I got it. I got I remember it. touring the Apple campus and whatever building we were in, there was a, there was like a slide that went from like the fourth <laughs> floor. It was like a, like a slide that went down to the first floor, but there was a layer of dust on that slide. <laughs> and I, I remember looking at to my friend who was with me touring it. And we were just, I was like, there's dust on that slide, man. They don't use that thing. You no. know, it was just like, and eh, that is, that is a prop if I've ever seen one. Like, yeah. but also well, it's like, we, we have a slide in our office. Like what? But wouldn't hell? you also think that maybe somebody thought, somebody said, you know, if we get people to use the slide versus go down the stairs, we're going <laughs> to save three hours a year. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> Multiply that by 40,000 employees <laughs> all going down the slide. And then somebody said, but the insurance. Yeah. <laughs> and then the dust started to gather. That is the story the, of the slide. <laughs> you just made the shareholders some money with that slide, buddy. Yeah, that's it's right. So stupid. So stupid. Anyway, and and then marketing came up with let it slide. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Everybody, we wow. did T-shirts. Let's go. Yeah. So, and you wow. know what happened? Digital agencies would suddenly put slides in their office if we thought that was a real thing that like they were doing at the bigs. We would totally start uh, doing that instead of all the other crap. There's there's some agency that's a member that's got a slide in their office, and they're like, "Fuck oh, you, guys." Man. Oh man! But you know, I, I wanted I wanted to say really quickly that the other type of opportunity you have there, and this gets back to kind of the jellyfish model, what we were trying to do at Engine. We talk about the small shops and the large shops. 
is this ability to kind of scale up and scale back down. So that like right now, if I was running engine, I don't know which size we would be. Would we be 50 or would we be 15? I don't know because right. it would also depend on the quality of the talent mm -hmm. that we were bringing in. I think that's super right. important. A lot of people are just trying to find somebody who's got the skills that are required for the project. Right. And I think that's really kind of dangerous because you can scale up or scale down depending on your type of the type of shop you are. And also there are a lot of agency alliances that I've been contacted about a lot, three probably in the last four months where people are saying, we're trying to create this collective. We're trying to do this thing where we know we can partner together since we can't necessarily grow our teams the way we want to. And the reason that people are doing that and the thing that I think people have to be super careful about is just hiring to hire. Mm. Because it, if you go through a massive hiring, right? Like I was talking with a shop a couple of days ago that had lost about almost 30 people. Now, this is a shop that's a few hundred people, right? They lost almost 30 people, but they had hired over 70. Wow. And and I said, like, how, you know, what is the process? What are you going through, Right. And they're, you know, they're, they're slowing down on some things like they're slowing down in terms of the amount that they're asking people to do. They're making sure the salaries are covered. They're doing a culture check to make sure everything's good there. But the danger becomes if you just flood mm -hmm. now for them, it's maybe like 15 or 20 percent new people coming in. But that starts to erode the trust of the current team mm -hmm. because they're like they're in a project. They're like, I don't right. know three of these people. Right. Right. I've never seen these people. Maybe they're like me. Right. Whoa. And, <laughs> uh, but the, but the thing I think that, um, that happens that comes out of that, when you start to get just that much new at one time mm. is that you start to bring in people who may have the hard skills, but they don't have the soft skills. Mm. And this, this goes back to a, a design leadership camp. One of the first ones we had and 30 design leaders from really large organizations who have design teams of like each one had 20 to 50. Some people had a hundred designers just on their team. I'm talking, wow. you know, Disney, I'm talking um, American Express, I'm talking these types of organizations. And somebody asked the question, how many of you have fired somebody in the last year because of a hard skill issue? They didn't have the skills to do the job and not a single yeah. hand went up. Right. And how many of you fired somebody because of a soft skill? And you know what? like 13 hands went up out of right. 30. Like, right. I, I think this is, could be the next wave, right? Like we're going to build these teams and we didn't pay enough attention to the soft skills. And now we got to fire people because they, yeah. they're just not good people or they just don't get along. Right. That was, that was sort of the rub with some of these code school graduates was they had, you know, they knew like some nuts and bolts, but they didn't quite know how to, like communicate with the other team members. They didn't know how to ask for help. They didn't know how to speak to clients. Um, yeah. On one hand, I get it. But on, then on the other hand, it's like, well, you know, it's a six month program. How do you expect them to like have work experience? You know, like, <laughs> like a, a four year wow. veteran in the industry would have. I get it. But um, I think someone who kind of has come through you know, whether it's been, you know, they've got some skills, they've been hired and they've worked like in that junior role for a while. They, they build those skills because they have to versus someone who's sort of force fed some information and then chucked out there. They're not, I mean, where they were going to get it from. Um, well, you know, this is interesting because I think, you know, a lot of people do tests, right? Like the person I was talking about yeah. who just came through the right. Google certification is like, yeah, I had to take this test. That was kind of weird. Those tests don't show how you perform under pressure. That's don't right. show how you help a teammate. Don't show how you treat a client. That's right. Don't, don't do any of those things. But I, I think maybe there is something where you could put people, like, I don't know if the apprenticeship programs do this, but put them under a little pressure. Put them in a contest. Yeah. See how they do, right? Yeah. Like, don't play games. Like, make sure everybody's getting compensated or treated fairly or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think that's it, right? It's like when the shit hits the fan. Mm -hmm who is still being a team player mm -hmm. and saying, we can do this. Let's take a deep mm -hmm. breath versus fuck it. I'm out. Yeah. I'm right? getting my resume up, updated. Right. Yeah. Right. I think that's the key. And, and, you know, if I were looking at hires or people, I would probably look towards that in someone over the hard skill. Right. Cause did you uh, say hirers? What did I say? 
<laughs> no, they said if I was looking at hirers, hire is that I don't people know. who hire? And maybe I don't know what I meant. <laughs> if I were look at looking at hiring someone, oh man, I've said so many stupid things on this show, and now I'm coming at you. Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Well done. Um, yeah, <laughs> I would. I would look to those soft skills first. I think. Yeah, and try well, I mean, to figure yeah. out a way to trying to figure out a way to develop them or uncover them or whatever over the hard skills. Cause I think you can teach people. Well, see, know, I think teach people stuff. I think an important thing when you're bringing somebody new in and it's difficult now, right? Because it is totally a seller's market. Like mm -hmm. they have the ability. Like, I remember at the turn of the century when, when we were hitting 2000 and all of those uh, IT techs could demand a signing bonus. Like that was a real thing. Like if you were a Cobalt programmer or Fortran 4 <laughs> and nobody did that shit anymore, you could demand yeah. like a $20,000 signing bonus before you came right. in to Y2K proof shit. Right, right. Right. And I think, it, I don't think it's definitely not at that level right now, but I think we, I mean, we used to be able to have chemistry checks with people. Like we would, we would invite them to come hang out with the team and do stuff. You can't do that right now. Or maybe you can start to do that again. But I think the other thing is, we would have people work on a test project because if you ask somebody to do a test while they're working somewhere else, right? Like that's the thing. Somebody's going to have to make a commitment to you right. to come on because more than likely they're working right now right. or they're going to leave probably a lucrative freelancing gig. But I think if you don't have somebody work on a project with you for two months, you're not going to see how they react to different situations. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how the time you? frame has changed. Unfortunately, this feature is being added. The budget is kind of screwy. Mm -hmm. You know, how do they react to all that stuff? I mm -hmm. think that's that's really important. Mm -hmm. Agreed. All right, man. Uh, it's kind of related, unrelated, but still the same. <laughs> you sent me the the link of the week. The hot link of the week. Oh, it's not hot because it's a hot take. It's just the link of the week. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's kind of hot. I screw that up every time. <laughs> you know what? It is an article from Carl Sackis. And Carl is a member in the community. He does a lot of agency consulting and stuff and has hung around with us for quite a while. And I say, this thing got 12% of the clicks hmm. on, on the page. I think it was like something like 50 or 55 uh, clicks, which, wow. is a, which is a lot. That's a lot. Right? That's and lot. this is all about establishing a client waiting list, which Very I think is super smart. So... The basics of what Carl is saying, it's so funny. I sound like I'm talking about myself in the third person, but um, is that if you've got work coming in too fast, put up a velvet rope. And, and I think that's important. And you mentioned it a little bit, Gene. It's like, it's saying, hey, you know what? We're a smaller shop. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you're larger, you can do this, right? And say, you know, we only take on so much work at a time right now. We don't want to grow a team really fast and put inexperienced people on your team. Mm -hmm. We are in high demand. We can put you on the list for a deposit and we will get started within the next two months or within the next three months, right? Mm -hmm. It gives you a little bit of, a, as you're trying to dovetail projects and all that, it gives you a little bit of a grace period. Mm -hmm. I think there's even more you can do with this, which is having certain types of projects that you put in that are beneficial, but may mm -hmm. not necessarily be necessary to have them separate out, right? Like I think discoveries or definition phases can right. be a wonderful way to kind of slow things down a little. And I know that sounds manipula manipulative, manipulative. Okay. But I know it sounds that way, but the reality yeah, but is if a client wants to start and you can scratch that itch mm -hmm. and you can go even deeper to make sure you're really getting everything well-defined before you get started, then they get to start, you get to understand what it is, and you get to roll them in. I mean, if you were drawing out your process, right? If you were if you're doing this thing like you were saying, redefining your business, looking at your process, you would likely pull out that requirements phase, whatever, mm -hmm. and make it its own phase anyway. Right. Yeah, like I mean you should. I think you should. In the best case scenario, you'd be doing that before you did anything else. Because you want to make sure, yeah, there's good chemistry, everything's all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed, everything's in place. You'd want all your content, you know, whatever, all that shit. You'd pull that out anyway. So I don't know that it's manipulative. I think it's like 
Smart. And it, and it is, if your production team is where you're having a hard time filling roles, which is what we're talking about, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Why the hell would you try to overburden them? I mean, pull that part yeah. out, spend some extra time on it. You're right. They're going to, the client's going to love that shit. Well, and, and it, it is. You're paying great attention to them. Well, and I think it is. I and mean, when I say manipulative, I meant you can slow that down a little. Mm -hmm. Right. You can say, hey, you know, what if we do this, uh, not this Thursday, but next Thursday? We'll get back to do the workshopping. But but to that point, I think also you're, you're right, right? It's developers, it's designers, it's project managers, it's it's producers mm -hmm. and the people who are managing that production. Um, and I mean, no disrespect to anybody who does discoveries, it's a little more learnable. Like it, it's a little right. more of your personality type. Right. And yeah. I haven't heard anybody say, I'm struggling to find people that I can hire to workshop a good discovery. I, I think right. that's a trainable thing that you can totally yeah. can totally do. Yeah, it is. And you know, uh, if you have a problem with too much work for your team, you're definitely not missing people on the front end. <laughs> like you right. got them there. Like put them put their yeah. ass to work. Make them figure some shit out or track some stuff down or whatever. Yeah. Um, when it's also one of those things that clients love. They they generally oh, love man. getting in there and getting to talk through it and getting everything out. So I think. Mm -hmm. I think that's really, really important. Another thing that, that we had great success with uh, when we were trying to kind of slow down the onboarding mm -hmm. is just homework assignments for the client. Oh, you yeah. Know, just yeah, say, yeah. hey, we really need to understand a little bit more about how the company's structured. Could you find out for us what have the sales trends been like in the last six months? We want to make yeah. sure that as we're creating the metrics for success, that we're looking at reality of what you've done in the past. And they'll probably say yes. And then go dark on you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those things. Like, if you know that when you really need a client, that they're going to disappear, you can use that to your advantage. I mean, and, and again, okay, it's manipulative, and I don't care. It's glorious. You, you can totally go in there and say, "Hey, we really need this, this, and this." Or could you set up a call with this person? We want to make sure that we're fine tuned. The other thing is, it really will benefit the project. It's not like you're doing something at their detriment. But I think a good process is one that you can manipulate. Right. I think I think that's the mark of a, a really solid flexible, process. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's a better word. Flexible. I mean, it's um, it's what you'd want. And if you were engineering it out, you try to engineer it. So you had a lot of flexibility in how you did things and put your projects together. That'd be that'd be the best case scenario. So, I mean, you should absolutely take advantage of it. Yeah. The, the, this client wait list seems like a great way to do it. And then, yeah, like we're saying, like you just kind of roll yeah. them into pieces, parts as wherever you can. Well, I mean, and I think the client wait list, the, the really great part of it, and I did something similar. I think the way Carl describes it really makes it easy to understand. Uh, mm -hmm. But we always call it the velvet rope strategy, mm -hmm. right? And yeah, occasionally we'd let somebody skip the line, right? <laughs> if we knew this was a great opportunity, but it makes people feel special to know that they got your attention and framing it, we only take on a certain number of projects at a time so that we can focus on those mm -hmm. clients versus trying to just make a bunch of money, mm -hmm. right? I think that yeah. is a great message. Well, that's like the article says, I mean, what's the alternative? You just pass it up, pass it up. Yeah. That's not, now, that's look, not good for business. <laughs> I will say this, you know, one of the things in the article is, is Carl talks about, if you can't do it, think about a referral. Absolutely. And, I think that's cool, but I never had success with it. Um, we were a referral partner to Happy Cog. We were a referral mm -hmm. partner to, uh, I'm blocking on their name now, um, but like a really big uh, meta lab. So mm -hmm. we were a referral partner to them. The thing that we found, and maybe this is different depending on the client, but the people we talked to, really wanted to work with happy cog they really right. wanted to work with metal lab and when they got us we were like a consolation prize and mm -hmm. uh they, it just it never panned out so mm. i think if if you do have something that's a trusted partner that you work mm. with a lot versus a network maybe it can work i'm a little skeptical on that one i i think there's also mm. some potential backlash if something goes wrong with that right. recommendation and right. then you're still dealing with it almost like it was your client Right, because they're going to hold it against you. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, these are your friends, right? And they screwed me over. <laughs> well, my friends did screw you over. <laughs> they did. I'm not yeah. going to kid you, Gene. 
one day. Okay, what up. happened? We just we had radio <laughs> silence. That's not good. I was joking, and I think maybe my friends really did screw you over. I'm just trying to figure out who your friends were. Oh my God, so am I, dude. So <laughs> am I. <laughs> no idea. There are people who said they were. Yeah. That only lasts until the second injunction. <laughs> Is that Judge Wapner again? Oh my God. Oh my God with him and whoever the dude was out in the hall. What's your uh, what's your hot take for the week, my friend? Hot take of the week, Gene. <sighs> I'll tell you what my hot take of the week is. You know what? If you're running a larger shop, I think you need to have a recruiting team, a dedicated recruiting team the same size as your biz dev team. If okay. you have three people working on nothing but business development, I think right now you probably need three people working on nothing but recruiting because you're at a size where you need that amount of work coming in. You're going to have to be at a size where you can protect against that kind of turnover right. or that kind of lack of skills in house. I think, right. I, I think talent needs to be an always on pipeline. And I also think that there are opportunities Ooh. even within the recruiting networks. And this is from conversations I've had recently where you can talk to a really reputable recruiter and say, Hey, I know you normally get like 20% of the year salary as a fee, but what if we go ahead and do more of a quantity deal where you cut me a break and we'll keep working together a lot. And you can work with this internal team who's mm -hmm. also going to be making sure that we don't stall out. So we'll give you, you know, more signal if you give us a better deal. And I don't even know if 20% of salary, I just made that up. So come at me people. That's fine. Cause Gene, we actually did have some letters that came in. They call them emails today. Oh, um, but not if you print them out. Not if you print them out. But uh, but yeah, so I think that's it, man. It's like have a biz dev team. Look at that size of that biz dev team. Make that the same size for your recruiting team. Have always be recruiting. Always be recording. Always be closing. No, always be recruiting. And then also look at some of those other existing networks of reputable recruiters and how can you maybe cut a deal i dig that yeah i dig that awesome it's good stuff well it good is stuff. really good stuff that's all i got that's all you got unless you got more <laughs> i like how you know what i got you got it you know what you do know what i got and that's all i got <laughs> all right everybody we'll see you next week